You you did a, a great video on Moloch, one aspect of it, the application of it to one yeah. aspect. Of Instagram our beauty filters. Yeah. <laughs> Through <laughs> very niche. Uh, I wanted to start off small. Um, so uh, Moloch was originally um, coined as well. So, so apparently, back in the like uh canaanite times it was this ancient carthaginian i can never say it carthagin somewhere around like 300 bc or 200 ad i don't know um there was supposedly this death cult who would sacrifice their children to this awful demon god thing called, they called moloch um in order to get power to win wars so really dark, horrible things. And it was literally like about child sacrifice. Whether they actually existed or not, we don't know. But in mythology, they they did. And this god that they worshipped was this thing called Moloch. And then, it, I don't know, it seemed like it was kind of quiet throughout history um, in terms of mythology beyond that until um, this movie, Metropolis, uh, in 1927, talked about um, this movie. You, you see that there was this incredible futuristic city that everyone was living great in. Um, but then the protagonist goes underground into the sewers and sees that the city is run by this machine. And this machine basically would just like kill the workers all the time because it was just so hard to keep it running. And they were always dying. So there was all this suffering that was required in order to keep the city going. And then the protagonist has this vision that this machine is actually this demon Moloch. So again, it's like this sort of like mechanistic consumption of, of humans in order to get more power. Um, and then Allen Ginsberg wrote a poem in the 60s, um, which incredible poem called Howl about this thing, Moloch. Um, and a lot of people sort of quite understandably take the, the interpretation of that he's, uh, that he's talking about capitalism. Um, but then the, be like the sort of piece de resistance that's moved Moloch into this idea of game theory uh, was Scott Alexander of Slate Style Codex um, wrote this incredible one. Literally, I think it might be my favorite piece of, of writing of all time. It's called Meditations on Moloch. Everyone must, must go read it. Uh, and I say Codex is a, is a blog. It's a blog, yes. Yeah, we can link to it in the show notes or something, right? Um, no, don't. Okay. I, I, yes, yes. <laughs> but I, I like how you, how, how you assume I'm, I have a professional operation going on here. I, I, I mean, I, I shall try to remember. To... What do you <laughs> What do I want? You want? You want? You're giving the impression of it. Yeah, yeah. I'll like, please. If I if you, I you don't, want... please somebody in the comments remind me. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll if help. If you don't know this blog, it's one of the it's best so blogs good. ever. Probably, yes. you should probably be following it. Yes. Um, Are blogs still a thing? I think they yeah. are still a thing. Yeah. yeah, he's migrated onto Substack, but yeah, it's still a blog. Um, anyway, Substack better not fuck things up. But I hope not. Yeah, yeah I hope cause... they don't. I hope they don't turn Moloky. Yeah. Which will mean something to people when we well, continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I stop interrupting for once, no, no, yes, go, go, go on. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so he writes he writes this this piece, Meditations on Moloch, and basically he analyzes the poem and he's like, okay, so it seems to be something relating to where competition goes wrong, and you know, Moloch was historically this thing of like where people would sacrifice a thing that they care about, in this case, children, their own children, uh, in order to gain power. A, a competitive advantage. And if you look at almost everything that sort of goes wrong in our society, it's that same process. Um, so with the Instagram beauty filters thing, um, you know, if, if you're trying to become a, a, a famous in, uh, Instagram model, you are incentivized to post the hottest pictures of yourself that you can. You know, you're trying to play that game. Um, there's a lot of hot women on Instagram. How do, how do you compete against them? You post, post really hot pictures and that's how you get more likes. As technology gets better, um, you know, more te makeup techniques come along. Um, and then more recently, these beauty filters where like at the touch of a button, it makes your face look absolutely incredible um, compared to your natural, natural, natural face. Uh, these, these technologies come along. It's everyone is incentivized to, to that short term strategy. Um, but over on on net it's bad for everyone because now everyone is kind of like feeling like they have to use these things and these things like they make you like the reason why i talked about them in this video is because i noticed it myself you know like i i was trying to grow my instagram for a while i've given up on it now but um yeah and i noticed these filters how good they made me look and i'm like well i know that everyone else is kind of doing Go it subscribe to live's instagram <laughs> please so i don't uh, have to use the filters <laughs> <laughs> uh post a bunch of yeah make make, make it blow up uh so yeah, yeah it's it's well, there was, you felt the pressure actually. Exactly. You the, these short-term incentives to do this like 
this thing that like either sacrifices your integrity or something else um, in order to like stay competitive, um, which on aggregate turns like t- creates this like sort of race to the bottom spiral where everyone else ends up in a situation which is worse off than if they hadn't start you know than it were before. Kind of like if um like at a at a football stadium. Uh, it, like the system is so badly designed, a competitive system of like everyone sitting and having a view that if someone at the very front stands up to get an even better view, it forces everyone else behind to like adopt that same strategy just to get to where they were before. But now everyone's stuck standing up. Like, so you need this like top down God's eye coordination to make it go back to the better state. But from within the system, you can't actually do that. So that's kind of what this Moloch thing is. It's this thing that makes people sacrifice, uh, values in order to optimize for the the winning the the game in question the the short term game but this this Moloch, do you, can you attribute it to any one centralized source or is it an, an emergent phenomena from a large collection of people exactly that it's it's an emergent phenomena it's it's a force of game theory um it's a force of bad incentives on a multi agent system where you've got, you know, Prisoner's Dilemma is technically a kind of Moloch-y you know, system as well, but it's just a two-player thing. But um, another word for Moloch is multipolar trap, um, where basically you just got a lot of different people all competing for some kind of prize. Um, and it would be better if everyone didn't do this one shitty strategy, but because that sh- strategy gives you a short-term advantage, everyone's incentivized to do it, and so everyone ends up doing it. So the responsibility for... I mean, social media is a really nice place for a large number of people to play game theory. And so uh, they also have the ability to then design the, the, the rules of the game. And uh, is it on them to try to anticipate what kind of, like to do the thing that poker players are doing to, to run simulation? Ideally, that would have been great if, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack and all the, you know, the Twitter founders and everyone, if they had at least just run a few simulations of how, their algorithms would, you know, different types of algorithms would turn out for society, that would have been great. That's really difficult to do that kind of deep philosophical uh, thinking about humanity, actually. So not not kind of this level of how do we optimize engagement or what brings people joy in the short term, but how is this thing going to change the way people see the world? How is it going to get morphed in iterative game played into something that will change society forever that's that requires some deep thinking that's i hope there's meetings like that inside companies but i haven't there seen aren't. them there aren't that's the problem and and it's it's difficult because like when you're starting up a social media company you know you're aware that you you've got investors to please there's you bills to pay um you know there's only so much r and d you can afford to do you've got all these like incredible pressures and bad, you know bad incentives to get on and just build your thing as quickly as possible and start making money and you know i don't think anyone intended when they built these social social media platforms and and just to like preface it so the reason why you know the social media is relevant because it's a very good example of like everyone these days is optimizing for you know clicks um, whether it's the social media platforms themselves, because you know every click gets more you know impressions, and impressions pay for adver- you know adver- uh, they get advertising dollars, or whether it's individual influencers, or you know whether it's the New York Times or whoever they're trying to get their story to go viral. So everyone's got this bad incentive of using cl- you know as you called it the clickbait industrial complex. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a very molecky system because everyone is now using worse and worse tactics in order to like try and win this attention game, um, and. Yeah, so ideally, these companies would have had enough slack in the beginning in order to run these experiments to see, okay, what are the ways this could possibly go wrong for people? What are the ways that Moloch, they should be aware of this concept of Moloch and realize that it's any, whenever you have a highly competitive multi-agent system, which social media is a classic example of millions of agents all trying to compete for likes and so on, and you try and bring all this complexity down into like very small metrics, such as number of likes, number of retweets, whatever the algorithm optimizes for. That is a like guaranteed recipe for this stuff to go wrong and become a race to the bottom. I think there should be an honesty in founders. I think there's a hunger for that kind of transparency of like, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. This is a fascinating experiment. We're all running as a, hum- as a human civilization. Let's try this out. Yes, And like, actually just be honest about this. That we're all like, these weird rats in a maze, 
not none of us are controlling it. There's this kind of sense like the founders, the CEO of Instagram or whatever, Mark Zuckerberg has a control and he's like like with strings playing people. No, they're he's at the mercy of this is like everyone else. He's just like trying to do his best. And and like I think putting on a smile and doing over uh polished videos about how Instagram and Facebook are good for you. I think is not the right way to uh, to actually ask some of the deepest questions we get to ask as a society. Right. How do we design the game such that we build a better world? I think a big part of this as well is people. There's this there's this philosophy, particularly in Silicon Valley, um, of well, techno optimism. Technology will solve all our issues. And there's a steel man argument to that, where yes, technology has solved a lot of problems and can potentially solve a lot of future ones, but it can also, it's a, always a double-edged sword, and particularly as you know, technology gets more and more powerful, and we've now got like big data, and we're able to do all kinds of like psychological manipulation with it and so on. Um, it's it, Technology is not a va values neutral thing. People think, I used to always think this myself, it's like this naive view that, oh, technology is completely neutral. It's just it's the humans that either make it good or bad. No, te to the point we're at now, the technology that we are creating, they are social technologies. They literally dictate how humans now form social groups and so on beyond that. And beyond that, it also then, that gives rise to like the memes that we then like coalesce around. And that, you know, if you have the stack that way where it's technology driving social interaction, which then drives like mimetic, uh, mimetic culture and like the, which ideas become popular, that's Moloch. Mm -hmm. And the, we need the other way around. We need it. So we need to figure out what are the good memes? What are the good um, values that we think are, we, we need to optimize for that like makes people happy and healthy and like keeps society as robust and safe as possible? then figure out what the social structure around those should be. And only then do we figure out technology. But we're doing the other way around. And, you know, like, as much as I love, in many ways, the culture of Silicon Valley, and like, you know, I do think that technology has, you know, I don't want to knock it. It's done so many wonderful things for us. Same with capitalism. Um, there are, we have to, like, be honest with ourselves. We're getting to a point where we are losing control of this very powerful machine that we have created. Can you redesign the machine within the game? Can can you just have, can you understand the game enough? Okay, this is the game. <laughs> and this is how we start to reemphasize the memes that matter. The, the memes that bring out the best in us. Uh, you know, like the way I try to be in real life and the way I try to be online is to be about kindness and, mm -hmm. and love. And I feel like I'm, sometimes get like criticized for being naive and all those kinds of things. But I feel like I'm just trying to live within this game. I'm trying, trying to be to authentic. Yeah, but also like, hey, it's kind of fun to do this. Like you guys should try this too, you know? that, And that's like trying to redesign some aspects of the game within the game. Um, Is that possible? I don't know, but I think we should try. Uh, I don't think we have an option but to try. Well, the other option is to create new companies or to pressure companies uh, that, or anyone who has control of the rules of the game. I think we need to be doing all of the above. I think we need to be thinking hard about what are the kind of positive, healthy memes. Um, uh, you know, as, as as Elon said, he who controls the memes controls the universe. Um, he said which, that. I think he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, there's truth to that. Yeah. It's very there is wisdom in that because memes have driven history. You know, we we are we are a cultural species. That's what sets us apart from chimpanzees and everything else. We have the ability to learn and evolve through culture, yeah. as opposed to biology or like you know classic physical constraints. And that means culture is incredibly powerful and we can create and become victim to very bad memes or very good ones. Um, but we do have some agency over which memes, you know, we, we sub but not only put out there, but we also like subscribe to. Um, so I think we need to take that approach. We also need to 
you know, because I don't want the, 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 you know, I'm making this video right now called The Attention Wars, which is about like how Moloch, it, like the media machine is this Moloch machine. Uh, well, is this, is this kind of like blind, dumb thing that where everyone is optimizing for engagement in order to win their share of the attention pie? Um, and then if you zoom out, it's really like Moloch that's pulling the strings because the only thing that benefits from this in the end, you know, like our, our information ecosystem is breaking down. Like we are, you look at the state of the US it's in we're in a we're in a civil war it's just not a physical war it's 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 a it's an information war and people people are becoming more fractured in terms of what their actual shared reality is like truly like an extreme left person an extreme right person like they they it, they literally live in different worlds in their in their in their minds at this point, and it's getting more and more amplified. And this this force is like a like razor blade pushing through everything. It doesn't matter how innocuous a topic is; it will find a way to split into this, you know, bifurcated culture war, and it's fucking terrifying. Because that maximizes attention, and that's like an emergent Moloch type force, right? That takes any anything, any topic, and cuts through it so that it can split nicely into two groups, one, one that's... Well, it's, it's whatever, yeah. It's, it, it, all everyone is trying to do within the system is just maximize whatever gets them the most attention because they're just trying to make money so they can keep their thing going, right? Yeah. And the way, the, the, the best emotion for getting attention, in, well, because it's not just about attention on the internet, it's engagement. That's the key thing, right? In order for something to go viral, you need people to actually engage with it. They need to like comment or retweet or whatever. Um, and... Of all the emotions that, uh, you know, there's like seven classic shared emotions that studies have found that all humans, even from like un, un previously uncontacted tribes have. Um, some of those are negative, you know, like sadness, uh, disgust, anger, et cetera. Some are positive happiness, um, excitement, and so on. The one that happens to be the most useful for the internet is anger, because anger is it's such an active emotion. If you want people to engage, if someone's scared, and, and I'm not just like talking out my ass here, there are studies here that have looked into this. Um, whereas like if someone's like disgusted or fearful, they actually tend to then be like, uh, I don't want to deal with this. So they're, they're less likely to actually engage and share it and so on. They're just going to be like, Ugh. whereas if they're enraged by a thing, well now they're like, that triggers all the like, the, the, the old tribalism emotions. Um, and so that's how then things get sort of spread, you know, much more easily. They, they outcompete all the other memes in the ecosystem. Um, and so this, like, the, the, the attention economy, the, the, the wheels that make it go around are, is rage. Um, I did a, you know, a tweet. The, 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 the problem with raging against the machine is that the machine has learned to feed off rage because it is feeding off our rage. That's the thing that's now keeping it going. So the more we get angry, the worse it gets. Um, so the Moloch in this attention, in, in the war of attention, is constantly maximizing rage. What it is optimizing for is engagement, and it happens to be that engagement um, is, well, propaganda. You know, it's, I mean, it just sounds like every, everything is, is putting, is, is more and more things are being put through this like propagandist lens of winning whatever the war is in question, whether it's the culture war or the Ukraine war. Yeah. Well, I think the silver lining of this, do you think it's possible that in the long arc of this process, you actually do arrive at greater wisdom and more progress? It just, in the moment, it feels like people are be tearing each other to shreds over ideas. But if you think about it, one of the magic things about democracy and so on is you have the blue versus red constantly fighting. It's almost like they're in discourse creating devil's advocate, making devils out of each other. And through that process, d discussing ideas, like almost really embodying different ideas just to yell at each other. And through the yelling over the period of decades, maybe centuries, fi figuring out a better system. Like in the moment, it feels fucked up. Right. But in the long arc, it actually is pr productive. I hope so. Um, that said, we are now in the era of just as we have weapons of mass destruction with nuclear weapons, you know, that can break the whole playing field, we now are developing weapons of informational mass destruction, information weapons, you know, WMDs that basically can be used for propaganda or just manipulating people however they, you know, is needed, whether that's through dumb TikTok videos or, you know, there are significant 
resources being put in. Um, and I don't mean to sound like, you know, too doom and gloom, but there are bad actors out there. That's the thing. There are, there are plenty of good actors within the system who are just trying to stay afloat in the game. So we're yeah. effectively doing monarchy things. But then on top of that, we have actual bad actors who are intentionally trying to like manipulate the other side into doing things. And using, uh, so because it's a digital space, they're able to use uh, artificial actors, meaning bots. Exactly, botnets, you know, and this is a whole new situation that we've never had before. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, you know what I want to do? <laughs> you know what I want to do that, um, because there is, you know, people are talking about bots manipulating and, uh, have like malicious bots that are basically spreading propaganda. I want to create like a bot army for like that, like fights that. Yeah, exactly. For love, that fights though. That I mean, you know, there's there. I mean, there's truth to fight fire with fire. It's like, but how you always have to be careful whenever you create again. Like the, Moloch is very tricky. Yeah, yeah. Hitler and, was trying to spread love too. Well, yeah, so we thought, but you know, I, I, I agree with you that like that is a thing that should be considered. But there is, again, everyone. The road to hell is paved in good intentions, and this is there's there's always unforeseen circumstances, you know, outcomes, uh, externalities of you trying to adopt a thing, even if you do it in the very best of faith. But you can learn the lesson, lessons of history. If you can run some Sims on it first, absolutely. Let's. But you know. but also there's certain aspects of a system as we've learned through history that do better than others. Like for example, don't have a dictator. So um, like if I were to create this bot army, it's not good for me to have full control over it. Because in the beginning, I might have a good understanding of what's good and not. But over time that starts to get deviated because I'll get annoyed at some assholes and I'll right. think, okay, wouldn't it be nice to get rid of those assholes? But then that power starts getting to your head, you right. become corrupted. That's basic human nature. So well, distribute the power. Somehow. We need we need a a love botnet on a DAO. <laughs> a DAO love botnet. Yeah, but and without a leader, like without well, exactly a distributed right, well, yeah, without any kind of centralized. Yeah, without even you know, basically, is the more control, the more you can decentralize the control of a thing uh, to people, you know. But the the, the but the then you still need the ability to coordinate because yeah. that's the issue. When if th something is too, you know, that's really to me like the culture wars is it, the, the bigger war we're dealing with is actually between the, pe the like the sort of the. I don't know what even the term is for it, but like centralization versus decentralization. That's the tension we're seeing. Yeah. Power in control by a few versus completely distributed. And the trouble is if you have a fully centralized thing, then you're at risk of ty tyranny. You know, Stalin type things can happen uh, or completely distributed. Uh, now you're at risk of complete anarchy and chaos where you can't even coordinate to like on, you know, when there's like a pandemic or anything like that. So it's like, what is the right balance to strike between these two well, structures can't Moloch really take hold in a fully decentralized system? That's the, one of the dangers too. Yes, the the very vulnerable to Moloch. So the, a dictator can commit huge atrocities, but they can also make sure the the infrastructure works and uh, trains. Well, they they have that God's eye view at least. Yeah. They have the ability to create like laws and rules that like force coordination, yeah. which stops Moloch. But then you're vulnerable to that dictator getting infected with like this with some kind of psychopathy type thing. What's uh what's reverse Moloch? So great question. So uh, that's where so I've been working on this series. It's been driving me insane for the last year and a half. Uh, I did the first one a year ago. I can't believe it's nearly been a year. Uh, the second one hopefully will be coming out in like a month. Um, and my goal at the end of the series is to like present because basically I'm painting the picture of like what Moloch is and how it's affecting almost all these issues in our in our society and how it's you know driving it's like kind of the generator function as people describe it uh, of existential risk. And then at the end of that, wait, wait, the generator function of existential risk. So you're saying Moloch is sort of the engine that creates ex a, a bunch a bunch of X risks. Yes, not all of them. Like, like a, uh, you know, a. Um, it's a cool phrase. Generator function. It's not function. my phrase. It's it's Daniel Schmachtenberger. Um, oh, Schmachtenberger. I got that from him. Of course. Um, all all of things. Ideas. It's like all roads lead back to Daniel Schmachtenberger. I the, think the dude is the dude is brilliant. Uh, yeah. He's, he's and after really, that, really it's Mark brilliant. Twain. But, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah. um, uh, totally rude interruptions so, from me. No, it's oh. fine. Uh, so not all X risks. So like an asteroid technically isn't because it's. Um, you know, it's just like this one big external thing. It's not like a competition thing going on. But, you know, synthetic biology, you know, 
bioweapons, that's one because everyone's incentivized to build, even for defense, you know, bad bad viruses, you know, just to threaten someone else, et cetera. Or AI, technically, the race to AGI is kind of potentially a mollicky situation. Um, but yeah, so if Moloch is this like generator function that's driving all of these issues over the coming century that might wipe us out, what's the inverse? And so far, what I've gotten to is this character that I want to put out there called Win-Win. Because Moloch is the god of lose-lose, ultimately. It mm. masquerades as the god of win-lose, but in reality, it's lose-lose. Everyone ends up worse off. So I was like, well, what's the opposite of that? It's Win-Win. And I was thinking for ages, like, what's a good name for this character? And then the more I was like, okay, well, I, I, don't try and, th you know, think through it logically. What's the vibe of Win-Win? Mm -hmm. And to me, like, in my mind, Moloch is like, and I, I address it in the video, like, it's red and black. It's kind of like very, you know, hyper-focused on its one goal, you must win. Um, so Win-Win is kind of actually like these colors. It's like purple, turquoise. Mm -hmm. um, it loves games too. It loves a little bit of healthy competition, but constrained, like kind of like before, like draw, knows how to ring fence zero sum competition into like just the right amount, uh, whereby its externalities of, can be controlled and kept positive. And then beyond that, it also loves cooperation, coordination, love, all these other things. Um, but it's also kind of like mischievous, uh, like, it, you know, it will have a good time. It's not like kind of like boring, you know, like, oh God, it's, it's, it, it knows how to have fun. Yeah, it, yeah. it can get like, it can get down. Um, but ultimately it's like unbelievably wise and it just wants the game to keep going. Um, and I call it win-win. Uh, win -win. That's a good like pet name. Yes. Win-win. The, I think the- Win-win. Win-win, right? <laughs> and I think it's formal name when it has to do like official functions is uh, Omnia. Omnia. Yeah. From like om omniscience, kind of what's, what, why Omnia? You just, just like, like Omnia? Win. Omni win. But I'm open to suggestions. I would like, you know, and this is- I like Omnia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's, but there that's is like, an angelic kind of sense to Omnia though. So win-win is more fun. So exactly. it's, more, it's more like a, uh, it embraces the- the 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 fun aspect. I mean, there there is something about sort of um, there's some aspect to win win interactions that requires embracing the the chaos of the game and enjoying the game itself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that is. That's almost like a Zen like appreciation of of the game itself, not optimizing for the consequences of the game. Right. Well, it's it's recognizing the value of competition in of itself yeah. about it's not like about winning it's about you enjoying the process of having a competition and not knowing whether you're going to win or lose this little thing but then also being aware that you know what's the boundary how big do i want competition to be because one of the reasons why moloch is doing so well now in our society in our civilization is because we haven't been able to ring fence competition uh, you know and so it's just having all these negative externalities and it's we've completely lost control of it um you know it's I think my guess is, and now we're getting really like, you know, metaphysical technically, but I, th I think uh, you, we'll, be, we'll be in a more interesting universe if we have one that has both pure cooperation, you know, lots of cooperation and some pockets of competition than one that's purely competition, uh, co cooperation entirely. Like it's good to have some little zero sumness bits, um, but I don't know that fully and I'm not qualified as a philosopher to know that and that's what reverse moloch so this kind of win-win creature is an uh system is an antidote to the moloch system yes and i don't know how it's going to do that um but it's I, good to kind of try to start to formulate different ideas different frameworks of how we think about that exactly at, at, the, at the small scale of a collection of individuals a large scale of a society exactly it's, it's a meme I think it's I think it's an example of a good meme. And I'm open I'd love to hear feedback from people if they think it's at, you know, they have a better idea or it's not, you know, but it's the direction of meme that we need to spread. This idea of like look for the win-wins in life.